let's begin having a look at some of the more common faults in fly casting. Before we do that, I want to introduce you to something called the six step method. Now the six step method was invented by a, an American casting instructor and fly line designer called Bruce Richards. The six step method is a very good method for casting instructors to help their students, but it is in fact also a very good way of helping yourself when you're practicing your fly cast. The six step, step method is very simple. It simply means that you begin by taking a look at what's happening in the air. What is the line doing wrong? Then you think about what the rod is doing to make the line behave as it does. And finally, you think about yourself. What am I doing to the rod to make the line do what it does? That's the first three steps. That's the fault identification. And the last three steps is the cure part. This is where you reverse the order and think, what do I have to do differently in order for the rod to do what it's supposed to do in order to create, for instance, a nice tight loop. A common fault that I often see as a casting instructor is something that we casting instructors know as forward creep. Forward creep is actually caused by not adhering to Bill Gamble's essential about making a pause corresponding to the length of line in the air before you start your forward cast, in this case. What forward creep is, is when you make your back cast and you stop your rod and what Bill Gamble says is, now you must pause as the line unrolls in the air. But instead of pausing when you're creeping, you're actually, after you stop the rod, you drift forward with your hand and thus effectively reducing your casting stroke. Let's have a look at what creep looks like. First, I'll show you a proper cast where I make the pause as the line unrolls in the air and on the following cast, I will make a forward creep. I will creep forward with my rod hand as the line unrolls in the air. Pause. Notice how I creep forward with my rod hand as the line unrolls in the air. This doesn't have to be a problem. If you're casting a relatively short line, you can get away with this, but it will cause a lot of problems for you if you're trying to cast a long line. It will, in fact, cause a tailing loop in your forward cast. Using Bruce Richards' six-step method on this fault that I just showed you, the forward creep. Then I would analyze the cast in this way. I look at the line, I see a big tailing loop. Then I take a look at the rod to determine what's causing this tailing loop. And immediately I recognize that the rod is creeping forward and narrowing the casting stroke down so much that you make the rod tip dip under that straight line. And in doing so, I immediately identify of course, that it's the hand that's moving the rod forward. So reversing the argumentation, you either have to learn to keep your hand still, or if that's difficult for you, another way to avoid narrowing down the casting stroke too much is to introduce the drift. Learning to drift is also quite easy. What you do is simply, after you stop the rod on your back cast, instead of making the pause and holding your hand still, you simply drift backwards a little bit. Just a little bit is enough to cure the forward creep. What it looks like with the rod in the hand is this stop, drift and forward cast. Let me show you that again. Stop, drift 
and forward cast. Now it's very important that when you drift after the stop that you do it slowly and keep contact with the line and not sort of jerk the rod backwards like this, stop and do this. Then you lose contact with the line and you lose control over the line. So it's very important to be smooth in this stop, drift, forward cast. That will usually cure forward creep for anyone. Another common fault that I often see as a casting instructor, especially with beginners, is an uneven power application throughout the casting stroke. A good example of an uneven power application, and one that I see quite a lot, is that you start your casting stroke with a, almost with a jerk, with a very fast movement, and then you slow down. Let's take a look what happens to the loop if I put in way too much power very early in the casting stroke. This is what it looks like. You see how the line tails down underneath and actually loses both direction and loop shape. This is the result of an uneven power application early in the stroke. Another common way of making an uneven power application is when you're false casting and you're getting ready to deliver that final long cast and you really punch it hard at the very end on the delivery cast and you actually put in so much power that you end up dipping the rod tip under the straight line and thus also inducing a tailing loop. Here's a couple of nice controlled false casts with a smooth power application and then at the very end, I hit it hard, and sometimes it'll even go as wrong as that. Once again, using Bruce Richards' six-step method, I begin with taking a look at the line. And it's, especially in that last cast, very obvious that something was wrong. The line tailed badly and obviously I was putting in so much power that the rod tip dipped under that straight line path between forward and back cast. So what caused the rod to do that to the line? Well, that was my hand punching way too hard at the very end of the stroke. So once again, reversing the three steps, I, if I make a smoother power application, I should get rid of that tailing loop. A smoother power application will prevent the rod from dipping under the straight line path and thus result in a nice tight loop. Like that. And in fact, the cure is exactly the same if you have too early a power application. Also think smooth instead of that fast jerk at the very early part of the casting stroke. Another common fault that can be confused with an uneven power application is in fact finishing your forward stroke or even your backstroke too early. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's a couple of nice false casts and then one where I finish early. I hope you noticed that I stopped the rod a lot higher and a lot earlier in the stroke and how that produced a tailing loop. So when I take a look at the line, the tailing loop was very obvious. Once again, I take a look at the rod and I should be able to identify that it stopped very early and of course once I've identified that, it's obvious that I'm the one stopping the rod early. Reversing the three steps. If I simply stop the rod a little bit later, once again trying to sink smooth, that problem is cured. If you think about Bill Gamble's essential of always matching 
the size of your casting arc and casting stroke to the amount of line outside the rod tip and the amount of bend in the rod, that's actually also quite a common fault. What often happens is that while you have good control of this line length, you want to cast further. You lengthen the line, you put in more power to keep that line in the air, but you forget to lengthen the casting stroke. And in the end, you will lose control of the cast and you will often end up with a tailing loop. The cure for this problem is actually also quite simple. All you need to do is open up your casting arc because basically everything else you're doing right. You're lengthening the line, you're putting in more power to keep that line in the air. So if you just open up your casting stroke a little bit and as always think smooth, you will cure this problem. It's simply a matter of as you lengthen the line, as you put in more power, you also need to lengthen your casting stroke. And even widening your casting arc to match the longer casting stroke. Now good tracking is the result of maintaining the 180 degree rules so that, that, so that your back cast and forward cast are 180 degrees opposite each other. Now let's say for instance that my back cast is hanging out there to the right, looking like this. You can probably already see why it's hanging out there. It's a common fault that I see quite often that you, instead of going straight back into your back cast, you go in a curved motion and stop the rod out here rather than up here. That results in your back cast hanging a little bit out to the right. Now the problem with that is when your back cast is out here and your forward cast needs to go this way, when you start your forward cast, you actually start the line and the loop going in this direction. And the problem is while the cast may look good to begin with, when the loop nears completion, the loop will kick over to the left to the opposite side of where the back cast was and you will lose distance, you will lose presentation and you will lose line control. Just as bad tracking can result in your back cast being off to the right, it can of course also result in your back cast being off to the left. Now a back cast off to the left is a little bit more of a problem because when the line on the forward cast is coming from behind you, that's where you risk hooking yourself in the neck or in the back when you're fishing. The back cast off to the left is the result of a banana shaped movement with your hand in the back cast, but quite a late stop. That sends the line behind you. And also it will often result in a poor loop. Now, as you can see, this is often caused by fly fishermen wanting to look at their back cast. Now, this is definitely something that I recommend that you learn, but learn it by moving your head only and not your shoulders. As you can see, I'm having trouble keeping the back cast off the water. That's because this bad tracking destroys my loop and I also risk hooking myself in the neck because the line is coming from behind me moving forward rather than staying on my right. Tracking errors are not uncommon. In my experience as a casting instructor, I find that they are in fact maybe one of the hardest faults to correct. What you have to look for is the loop tilting over either to one side or the other on your forward cast. If you see that on your forward cast, that is most likely the result of bad tracking. If the loop kicks over 
to the left, your back cast is out to the right and vice versa. The best way of practicing your tracking is in fact to find a football field near you or to pull out a rope or a long measure tape on the ground and then simply cast parallel to this line or measure tape or rope or whatever you use and look for the loop turning over straight and then once in a while simply let your back cast drop and have a look and see if it's lying parallel to whatever you're casting along. When you're practicing your tracking, practice by carrying a long line in the air. Carrying a long line tends to exaggerate the fault that comes from bad tracking and vice versa. When you do a straight tracking, a long line is very rewarding. If you have trouble with very open, big wide loops, then the cure is quite simple. The reason for the big open loop is that the rod tip between the back cast and the forward cast is traveling in a convex tip path. There are two easy ways of curing this. If your loops look like this, You can cure it by either narrowing down the casting stroke using a shorter stroke or you can simply pay more attention to the acceleration in your cast. Be smooth, start slow, finish fast and that will also tighten up your loops for you. Another way of solving the problem if you have big open loops is simply to stop the rod a little bit earlier both on the forward cast and the back cast in relation to a very open cast that sometimes also causes these big open loops. Big open loops are a problem because they are sensitive to the wind, you lose line speed and you lose precision. When you go out to the field or even out to the water to practice your fly cast, first and foremost, remember to have fun. If you don't think it's fun, then go home and wait till another day. When you practice, always have good form and relaxed casting in your mind. And relaxed casting is all the way from having a relaxed grip on the fly rod to a relaxed arm position, to a relaxed body position. Think about relaxing. Also, when you're casting, think about being smooth. In fact, if you think about being smooth, that will often cure a lot of your problems. Smooth casting will cure everything from an open loop to a tailing loop. Sometimes it's good to just grab the fly rod and go out and have fun when you feel like it. At other times, it's good to go out and practice with a purpose. Think about, for instance, going to practice your tracking. Prepare by bringing a rope or a measure tape that you can cast along and think about the purpose of your training. When you practice, think about Bruce Richards six step method. Take a look at your line, what it's doing wrong. Think about the rod, what's it doing to cause the line to do something wrong. And finally, what are you doing to the rod that's causing the problem? and then reverse the order to correct it. Think about Bill Gamble's five essentials and that way you can help yourself become a better flycaster. <laughs>